Hey everybody, my name's Ira. Um, I'm doing this in the bathroom because I am never loud enough. <laughs> um, okay, so somebody in my blog asked me what my views were on, or how I feel about being an anti-capitalist living in an anti- or living in a capitalist society. Um, I think, for me, it's incredibly disenfranchising, and I think it's important. Or well, you should probably know what my politics are. <laughs> in general. Um, I, as far as my politics are concerned, I identify mostly with compassion and personal autonomy. Uh, for me, if just about anything violates that, then I'm going to be opposed to it, morally. Uh, uh, that, that being said, it's important to recognize that capitalism isn't just uh, a stagnant block within our culture. It's a, uh, it's an, inter it, we interact with it on a constant basis, and it, in some ways, if you will, despite it not being sentient or tangible, interacts with us. Um, so it's an, it's important to recognize that there are bodies of capitalism, and that there, I don't know if there really is a way to not interact with capitalism as much as I would like to, uh, to, to keep away from it. Um, that being said, like. Uh, a good example of this is, you know, dumpster diving, uh, or chosen homelessness, uh, i.e. squatting. Despite the fact that you are refusing to buy food, you're still interacting with capitalism as you are reaping off capitalism's waste. Um, and, you know, I'm not saying it's good or bad, it's just, it is. You, you're still doing it. You're still interacting with capitalism. Uh, I think that there are ways that I personally would prefer to interact with capitalism, but we don't always have the privilege of choosing the ways in which we interact with capitalism. Like, for example, I don't have the privilege of being able to dumpster dive because I live in an incredibly isolated uh, suburb, and so because I don't have a car, uh, it would be incredibly difficult for me to find places to dumpster dive, especially since uh, there's only, like, one really close by a grocery store. Um, that being said, I say that a lot. I, I have a lot of word fillers. Uh, I find that in a lot of radical queer uh, discussions uh, or, you know, groups or communities or whatever you want to call it, uh, there is a lot of, I guess, no op privilege, if you will, and a lot of uh, blatant cis sexism in that, you know, you say that you would like to interact with capitalism less and just like, okay, well, you know, move off the grid, <laughs> don't get a job. Uh, and, or, and, you know, blatant ableism to add to that. I don't, I don't have the privilege of not having a job. I don't have, I, ironically, it's, I, it's a weird way to say that. I don't have the privilege of choosing to not have a job. I don't, because I have to raise money for top surgery. I'm not, I'm not going to get that with my good luck. Although, I mean, like, let's face it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm, I'm not going to get it by asking nicely. Uh, I have to raise at least $5,000 depending on the surgeon that I want to go to. And, even more money than that, usually at least twice as much money as that, if you, know, if you want bottom surgery. Uh, so I just, the ways in which we discuss anti-capitalism in queer communities bothers me. Uh, because it's assumed that we are all anti-capitalists, which I, you know, I personally am, but not all of us who transition are going to bite the hand that feeds us in many ways. We don't need capitalism in order to in order to transition, however, in the United States, we need to recognize that it is because that capitalism is our economic system here, and therefore, in order to get the things that we need, not the things that we want, uh, the things that we need, we need to recognize that we have we have to play by the rules of the economic system, which is one of the reasons why it's so really disenfranchising for me. Uh, that that's not to say that you know, uh, medical transition wouldn't be possible in a different economic system, such as, you know, socialism and whatnot, but we need to recognize that it is because of economic systems that we have a technology today that we have, um, in many ways, uh, for example, a lot of, you know, Eugen technology comes from being an incredibly militaristic imperialist state, and, or, you know, like, birth control comes from incredible amounts of racism and experimenting on Puerto Rican women, uh, and experimenting on the indigenous in the, in the 1970s, et cetera, et cetera. So while, while they, t they definitely come out by terrible, terrible means, 
we also look at benefits in many ways, and and so it's not it's not it's not as black and white. Like yes, I don't like capitalism, but yes, I need surgery, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I I wish I could answer this better. I wish I could say, oh well, I do this to avoid capitalism, and I do that to avoid capitalism, but I don't I don't have that option, and I and I guess this is a uh, this will in some way provide a sense of solidarity to the people who don't have the privilege to simply uh, to go about their life choices that they would like because they have to interact with an economic system that they may not necessarily agree with in order to get the things that they need. Um, and I hope I hope it does because you know for the transitioning medically trans identified folks out there who dislike capitalism or identify as anti-capitalist, you are not alone. <laughs> uh, I, I personally, as far as my personal politics are concerned, I personally don't think that economic systems are necessary. They've only existed for 1% of the human existence on this planet. And so it's hard for me to want to interact with any economic system at all whatsoever. But on that same note, I don't know. This isn't like transitioning while being an anti-capitalist or while being, you know, or being queer you know, being an anti-capitalist in general is not necessarily so much from everybody about eradicating capitalism, but it's about removing oneself from the equation as much as, as, much as possible. Um, but I just, I, I don't know if, you know, as much as I would like to think that it's possible or that, you know, maybe I wouldn't need it if we lived in a food foraging society. I don't know how, I don't know how uh, likely it would be to be able to medically transition in a system without economics. Uh, if we never had economics, I don't know if it would ever be possible or necessary. Uh, but at the same point in time, I don't know if it would be possible without it now. Uh, I don't. I don't like to pretend like I have the answers to things that I don't. So I will let you think about that. Feel free to write in the comments what you feel, and you know, uh, or whether or not you think it's possible. And that's you know that works. Or you can ask me on my blog as usual, uh, or send me an email as usual as well. Uh, I hope, you know, I hope that I, that I gave a, a satisfactory answer, and, you know, I know that, I know that there's a lot of, like, hanging notes in here, and I, I get that, um, but I hope that, I hope that, you, you know, you listen to this and you're just like, okay, I, you know, I can see how I feel, and I, I, you know, I get where he's coming from, uh, and so yeah, I will talk to you later, okay. and, um, and I'm